Have you been applying for federal government jobs and you're not getting referred and you're wondering why? Let's get into the real reasons why you're not getting referred. Number one is frequency. You are not applying enough. At the end of the day, this is a numbers game. It's a numbers game. People complain that the system is rigged, that you have to know someone to get in, that you have to be a veteran. And when I hear these people complain, I often ask them, I said, how many times have you applied today? And they look at me and it's crickets. They haven't applied today. So then I ask them, how many times did you apply this week? And they say, oh, I applied, you know, I applied once or twice and then I saved a couple. That's not enough. That's not gonna cut it. You have to be very honest and upfront with yourself. Are you going to approach this in an aggressive manner? If you're serious about attaining a federal government job, that means you have to apply three or four times or five times every day. Can you commit to that? Can you turn that into a habit? Or are you gonna sit back and complain? There's one fellow that I know, and he's always coming up to me saying, I can't get any interviews. I can't get any interviews. I'm not getting any referrals. I don't know what's wrong. I'm qualified. I have the experience. But the thing about it is, this individual is not applying. He just doesn't apply. And because of this, I took a step back because I've assisted others getting federal government jobs and I created a rough formula on what you can expect when you're applying. And it goes like this. If you're applying four times a day, that means you are applying 20 times a week, which means you're applying 80 times a month. With a strong federal resume, you will receive 50% referral rate, which means out of those 80 applications, 40 of them will be referred. Out of that number, 20% should offer you an interview. So if you're sitting there watching me right now and you would like eight interviews, if that is something that you want, if you want eight interviews, then apply four times a day for a month. Just do it for a month, four times a day. At the end of that month, you'll have to wait a few weeks and then the interview request will start coming in. Now this seems simple, but people aren't doing it and it only takes 15 or 20 minutes to actually apply for one of those job announcements. So four times a day, we're talking about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, not even an hour, and you're given 24 hours. This is not even one hour. If you devote that every day, and your goal is to attain federal government employment, you will get there. Okay, so let's talk about the second reason. The second reason is you do not have a strong resume. Your resume is weak. <coughs> And you think it's okay because you you showed it to your friend. You showed it to some agency and they looked it over and they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, Brad, oh yeah, Susan, this one, yeah, this should be good. Go ahead and use this one. But it's weak. I know this because most federal resumes that I look at have glaring errors. So why is it weak? Well, it has bullet overload or it is generic. It does not specify your achievements. It does not quantify your achievements. Poor formatting, and it doesn't speak to the job announcement. And this is one of the main reasons why I created a small course down below to help individuals go step by step to create a strong federal government resume. Link in the description. It doesn't matter how many times you're applying if you do not have a strong federal government resume. You are essentially wasting your time. Even if you do not want any help, take the time to review your federal government resume and look for areas in which you can improve upon it. Look at the OPM job series handbook, which you can download right now. Look through that, find keywords, find ways you can strengthen your resume. After that, you can go to YouTube, Reddit, and look for advice that people have to help get you closer to your goal. Number three is you're applying for jobs that you're not qualified for. So if your resume is structured for the 0300 series and then you decide on a whim, I'm gonna apply to 0500 series. So 0300 is admin, 0500 is budget and finance. You can generally not take an admin resume and just qualify for a budget financial position. You need to have a strategy on what job series you will be targeting. And once you have done that, you need to have separate resumes, a 0300 resume, a 1700 resume if you wanna target those instructor positions, a 0500 if you wanna target those financial positions, a 2210 if you wanna target IT jobs. But applying for jobs that your resume doesn't speak to, that is another way that you can be wasting your time. And you have to understand that the HR specialist is not gonna take it for granted that you have other skill sets. It has to be clearly outlined and identified in your resume. 
You cannot say, well, I was an office manager, so obviously I have Microsoft Excel experience. No, it's not obvious. It's not obvious to HR that you have that. List it in your resume. Or another one that I hear is, I was a bank branch manager, so obviously I would have financial experience and I've dealt with finance. Well, you have to input that in there and you have to do it in a way which you're quantifying it so that you can bring strength upon your achievement. Number four is the job search location. So if you live in a small town and there's only ever three or four federal jobs that are being posted, well, you're limiting yourself. There are currently tens of thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of government jobs all across the world. And if you're in some small little town in a rural area and you can't leave, then you're not gonna be able to compete for those type of jobs. Let's say you're in St. Roberts or Waynesville, Missouri, and you're trying to compete for a GS9. Well, that's gonna be a difficult task because there's a huge retirement community out there that are all competing for that same job. You can move to Washington, D.C., Chicago, Philadelphia, in those areas, and you could probably get a GS12 or a GS13 a lot easier than you can a GS9, simply because there's more opportunities in those areas. Most federal government jobs are in and around large metropolitan areas and also military bases. So be willing to move if you're able to. And if you're not, then open up your job search to those remote and virtual jobs that do exist out there so that you're not restricted to that small little area that you're currently living in. Also, do not restrict or limit yourself in the job series that you're targeting. Do not think, I can only do 0300. There are other job series that you're probably qualified for. If you were in the military, you're probably qualified for the 1700 job series if you taught or trained or instructed anybody. So look through that OPM job series handbook and see all of the jobs that are available. There are hundreds of them that are available. Speaking of education and teaching, if you wanna know more about teaching in the federal government, if you wanna know more about the 1700 job series, then make sure you check out this video next. Now, tell me, are you happy with the amount of referrals and interviews you've been receiving lately? Let me know down below. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.